We're looking, in addition to the revolver, at an awesome old world slung shot. As the antique store label says, this was an antique store from Deadwood, Arizona, I'm told, because these pictures were sent to me, um, that it's from circa 1900, and that's probably about right. Dating these things is so difficult because they usually were just homemade like this one, so there's no maker's mark, there's no manufacturing history to reference. And anyway, we're going to talk about it, but also the kind of the world it came from and how common these were with cops and criminals right around that very early 20th century time. You can see here it weighs 5.3 ounces, and that's actually more than enough to do the job because, as you can tell, this thing has no cushioning, right? And the thing with a slung shot is that it's fully flexible or practically fully flexible, so that thing is going to get a lot of speed going. Now that iron or steel ball is going to hurt like hell when it hits because it's really going to whip into the target. Now, this was a very nefarious weapon type. Let's look at the chapter from my book where I talk about them. Quote from 1861, The man who carries a slung shot to a private party or anywhere else is a devil not to be tolerated in society. End quote. As you can imagine, that comes from a true crime incident where somebody did take one to a private party. And as you can tell by this picture here, this involves nautical history. Slung shots came from that world, just like this bosun's kosh that we're looking at here. Notice in this image that I included in my book, this is from the Ashley Book of Knots. Look at how many slung shot sap-like arrangements we can see just in this little gallery. Sailors were very handy, as their job demanded, so they were good at making things with their hands, good at using rope, and that equaled this implement that we're seeing here. See this heaving line? You have to heave it, throw it, so it's a heaving line. At the leftmost end, you'll notice a ball. Some of you already know this, of course, but that is a knot called a monkey's fist. It's a round knot encasing a round weight, and that's what gave this object impetus as you heaved it. And just a handy little device for throwing rope from, say, a dock to the deck of a ship. So handy that, as you can see, it's still used today, at least in many quarters. We've got a modern twist here where the ball, the load, is actually uh, a different color. That makes sense. Help visually track it because you don't want to get hit by that thing. Speaking of that, that's how this became a weapon. These two old school rope slung shots I'm showing you are made by Davidson Leather, by the way. I think there's little doubt that sailors realized, you know, that loaded monkey fist hurts if it accidentally hits somebody, could maybe even kill. What if we shorten the rope? drastically and carry it around in our pockets. And the slung shot proper was born. Not that this would be the first time a weight on the end of a flexible connection was used as an impact weapon, right? Anyway, by that process discussed, it was during the colonial era, roughly, that this kind of thing started to catch on, especially with criminals, like our man here on the left. This is an illustration of an actual bank robbery from near Bangor, Maine, uh, in a book that was published in 1913, so the incident was from some time before that. Or that year. Anyway, quote, As the door opened, Dave Stain and Cashier Barron suddenly came face to face. Barron stood paralyzed with astonishment as he peered into the masked face of the leader. Stain, with perfect composure, struck Barron a quick blow with a slung shot, landing the weapon exactly in the center of Mr. Barron's forehead. The cashier dropped to the floor stunned, and Stain imagined that his victim's skull was crushed. End quote. The illustrator way back when kind of screwed up the details there since the man in the back has the slung shot, but doesn't matter, you get the point. Very sadly, by the way, uh, Mr. Bear and the cashier died of suffocation because the criminals locked him in the bank vault. And not that that incident is in my book, but that's why my book gets classified as a true crime. Hey, uh, that's the record of these things being used. Although, they were used by law enforcement, as our label here, I think, says. Am I the only one having trouble reading that, but I think it says police? Back to illegal attractiveness, uh, one of the reasons this kind of thing would be popular here is because you can make it on your own, it's very effective, and especially for a slung shot, it's easily hidden. You roll this thing up and you can just stuff it in your pocket, right? As you can see in this picture here, the strap is, like I say, fully flexible. It's very bendy. So that's great because if you're going to carry around a billy club uh, to try to knock out your victim, that's going to look suspicious and it's going to be harder to hide on your person. Now, if you watch my channel, you know that normally this kind of thing would be covered with something at least softer than metal, <laughs> right? Rope or leather. And original sources say explicitly that that was to help quiet the blow. So once again, a crime-friendly feature. 
with the original rope slung shots, keep in mind that was just an accidental feature though, right? They just happened to be made out of rope. But that might be part of why they became so popular on the street, especially with muggers. And then by osmosis with all around tough guys, so from muggers to sluggers and sloggers. But even good guys could carry these because they just came in handy. So here's one of my previous videos where no less of a squeaky clean character than Mickey Mouse, although Mickey Mouse in the Old West, is using an iron ball slung shot to defend himself. So yes, they could be covered. They most often were, but no, they didn't have to be, just like here. And boy, this thing would cause a nasty cut to the scalp. You know, depending on how it strikes, if it kind of skidded across, if you will, yikes, but if it did. Uh, and but with the way that the ball is pinned down, as you can see, are kind of clamped down, There's there are uneven surfaces there. A common move with slung shots uh, was to throw them straight into the opponent's face, right? So you have a closed fist, you're throwing a punch, you release, and they're surprised when something hits them in the face from too far away. You wouldn't do that with this one. I think this one would always be swinging, right? Because of the way those double straps are constructed and their shape and size. Look at how small the load is here, too. Uh, it's That's a reduced striking surface, even if it was a perfectly smooth sphere. So it'd probably cut no matter what. And then it's got the advantage, uh, if you will, that I talked about a second ago. Remember an old uh, law enforcement officer online talking about how every time a blackjack got used, it equaled copious bleeding. I'm pretty sure then, for all the reasons we've talked about, this would be the same. I mean, at least a blackjack hit is covered in leather. This picture gives us opportunity to focus on how this was just standard tough guy equipment. Like I always say, saps and jacks, the whole thing, slung shots. Uh, very, very common for someone to walk out with an arsenal that was, you know, a few items like this. Uh, more than a couple, by the way. You know, you could have brass knuckles, a sap of some kind, uh, and a knife. Here's a similar contraption to the one we're looking at today, and it's mine. I forgot I owned this one. <laughs> made this video years ago. Uh, so these, I've only ever seen a few that are like this, but I don't think that's because it wasn't fairly common. I think that's because they were so disposable. Especially consider the kind we're looking at today. I mean, it's just as humble as it gets. Well, I say that, but you know, it's better than a lock dropped into a sock or whatever. Now let's get back to that late 19th, early 20th century world where things like this in particular, kind of a hard slung shot, was so popular with the criminal element. And we're going to go to a nice highfalutin academic paper here. White Power, Yellow Gold, Colonialism, and Identity in the California and British Columbia Gold Rushes, 1848 to 1871. Thank you to the author, or maybe the university, for putting this out on the internet and making it public. Let's read some excerpts, because one thing I learned in writing my book was, yeah, when you talk about the Gold Rush era and the gangs involved therein, slung shots come up a lot. And time for a little more true crime. So Victoria, British Columbia, the Colonial Theater in 1860, it had had integrated seating in terms of races, but then in 1860 became segregated, and they restricted seats for black patrons to just six to eight out of the whole thing. So this is really interesting. Can't imagine the following happening at the same time in the United States. So what happened is the local African-American community got upset. They had a white friend buy a bunch of tickets for the main section, and then they showed up on November 3rd, 1860, and demanded to be seated. They did have tickets, after all. Well, of course, they were refused, but here's the part I can't imagine. They forced their way in. Then uh, a melee ensued between the white patrons and the black. And, quote, By the time police arrived 15 minutes later, several men on both sides had been severely beaten with chairs, slung shots, and fists. End quote. Now, here's another note. It's not an actual crime. Quote, Victorians also singled out the English convicts from Sydney, <laughs> meaning Australians, for using slung shots. Slung shots were a coward's weapon because they allowed a man to incapacitate or kill without giving the victim a chance to resist, end quote. And then there's a footnote, which is a citation from 1851, quote, a slung shot was a heavy object tied with a length of rope to the wrist. This allowed the attacker to throw it at an opponent and pull it back to throw again, end quote. Eh, pretty much right. Well, I'm going to show you a few more detailed shots of this interesting item. I love that it survived. You know, this weapons tradition lives on. It really, really does. It lived on in the days of, you know, I talked about the lock in a sock, but the bandana run through a padlock. Uh, to this very day with the paracord ball bearing keychains and whatnot that you see, like on my channel and elsewhere. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that. This is a great old timer here. Thanks very much to Tim for sending me these pictures, uh, because or else I would not have been able to make this video. Bye.